before we begin, I know things look rough everywhere at the moment, <laughs> but I have a message for America, and it's this. Everything is going to be fine. <laughs> and that's, to be honest, not the ideal response you want to get from a statement like that. Some <laughs> nervous laughter and a sense of people going, yeah, but it isn't, though, so why would you say that? <laughs> yes, it is. Everything's going to be fine because you will make it so. American people are good at doing things that are unnecessary, <laughs> inadvisable, but which turn out to be incredible. I can give you examples of this. I was in rural Missouri last year, and I stood in a hotel that was themed around English authors. Now, <laughs> let me tell you where there is absolutely no demand for that. <laughs> rural Missouri, that's one place. Let me tell you where else there's no demand for that. Anywhere else in the world, nobody wants that sh <laughs> But one man had a dream. <laughs> a financially catastrophic dream. <laughs> and he built it, and I, for one, am glad that he did. Every room was themed around a different author. So you'd have the author's name on the front of the door, and then inside there'd be a book of theirs and a little biography about what they'd done through their life. It was a lovely idea. So you walk down this corridor and you could see these names. Shakespeare, Byron, Shelley, Keats. And then my feet froze <laughs> in the carpet. Because I realised that I was looking up at a door that simply read, James Bond. <laughs> Ian Fleming, New York, not the author of the James Bond books, no, James Bond himself, a made-up man. And it was amazing to be able to stand at the exact point that the owner of this hotel realised he had made a huge mistake and he was going to be forced to name the rest of the rooms after English people that he'd heard of. So I knew I was about to embark upon a journey down a corridor that would read Shakespeare, Byron, Shelley, Keats, James Bond, David Beckham, Harry Potter, <laughs> Susan Boyle, the chef who swears a lot. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. We're in a much better place now than we were 12 months ago. A few people died over the last 12 months whose deaths have benefited humanity. <laughs> now, you look at uh, Colonel Gaddafi, you look at Bin Laden, you look at Kim Jong-il, who became Kim jong very ill now Kim Jong-dead. Kim <laughs> jong That just happened. <laughs> Kim jong That's a joke. Deal with it. <laughs> you, you look at these... You look at these three men, and it's strange to hear that someone's died and have your first reaction be, oh, that's great. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> That's great. It'll be great not to have them around anymore. <laughs> That's not how we're taught as kids. You know, as children, you're taught to mourn human life when it passes in all its forms. We have a system of obituaries which focus on the positive things in people's lives, even if they've been an unremitting dickbag. <laughs> but at the end of those three men's lives, a tribute did not seem appropriate. A eulogy was closer <laughs> to what was actually required. We will all remember where we were for the rest of our lives when we first found out that Bin Laden had been killed. I remember where I was. I was sitting at home on my couch watching the TV. <laughs> Some of you may have a similar story. <laughs> but I now know where I wish I was instead, because it wasn't at home and it wasn't in Pakistan. I wish that I was in Tampa, Florida at a WWE wrestling event. <laughs> How do I know this? Because I've been on YouTube and I saw the news of Bin Laden's death announced to a sold-out Tampa crowd of wrestling fans by the professional wrestler John Cena and it was f***ing incredible. <laughs> John Cena climbed into the ring and he said, I've never been more proud than I am right now to be an American. I walk into this ring every day with hustle, loyalty and respect on my sleeve. It's worth noting that at this point, he was sleeveless. 
<laughs> he went on to say, I am proud to announce to you that we have caught and compromised to a permanent end. <laughs> Osama bin Laden and Tampa went batch crazy. <laughs> and I watched this clip with my heart pounding, slowly realising that I prefer that to what the president said. <laughs> because there is more poetry in that caught and compromised to a permanent end. Where did that come from, professional wrestler? <laughs> And where can I get a little more? That's what I wanted to hear from the president. And if I'm honest, I also would have liked him to have been shirtless, if I'm honest. <laughs> if I'm honest. Because if there was ever a time for an American president to address his nation shirtless, that was that time. And he was that president. Looking straight down the camera, saying, we have caught and compromised to a permanent end. Osama Bin Laden before fireworks shot out the side of the podium and Def Leppard were lowered from the ceiling. <laughs> Playing pause some sugar on me. As the president moonwalked out of the Oval Office, flexing. <laughs> <laughs>